Hello everyone, uh, this is Nishal here for Solid Tech. Uh, this will be my first blog post and uh, today I will be discussing um, custom properties in SolidWorks and uh, how we can automate them. Uh, custom properties in particular, uh, things like part numbers, drawing numbers and um, serial, serial numbers if you, if you use serialization in your parts. Um, typically uh, what I see a lot of people do is um, they'll manage part numbers in an Excel document very similar to this. Uh, so you have part number and a flag that tells you whether the uh, number has been used up or not. So in this case here we have number 10, 20, 30 that have already been used up. So the next number in the sequence will be 40. And then you just, somebody uses up that number, you just type yes, save it, and um, so the next person that goes to uh, create a part number will use 50. Now this process, while it's fine, it is a little bit tedious and time consuming. Uh, so uh, hopefully I can automate, we can automate the process and show you how we can do that a little bit faster. So uh, as I mentioned, we can do this using macros. So I'll just try a new part. So here I have a uh, a custom button that runs a macro and uh, we can insert this button simply by going into customize under commands macro and just drag this button out here so it'll ask you for the uh, the macro so you just select your macro and this is the uh, the method that you're gonna run to start up start it all off I have the exact same button here so I won't do it again now the way this works is so you click the macro, it pops up this little dialog box and uh, so here you just, it's just asking you to select uh, so what is the custom property that you want to want to write so we'll just say a part number and apply. Looking at the custom properties here's your part number and this is the actual part number that it's applied and um, in just a few minutes here I'm going to tell you where the source of this information is. We can also do um, a serial number, apply that. So there's your serial number property, and you'll notice that it's, it's uh, incrementing by 50. And you can also apply a drawing number. So there's our drawing number. Um, another last little functionality here is um, you can actually save the drawing. As as the uh, sorry save the file as the drawing number. So if I just check that and apply, now it's going to say there was a problem applying the property. It may already exist. That's fine. We can just say OK here, and just after that, it'll pop up this little box. So it's going to save. Uh, it's already pre-filled the uh, the file name. So we can just save that, and so we have uh, the file name that is equal to the drawing number. Now, um, how does all of this work? Well, uh, by default, and I'm, I'm going to, in the blog, if you just uh, look in the description area, I'm going to post all of the files for you to use. So we have this, uh, on, the, on the root of your C drive, we have this little text file, part number generator. Um, so when you first download the file, the default values are going to be zero there. Now the start number obviously you can set this to whatever you want so I'm going to say start at 5000. This is um, a little prefix that you can add and a suffix that you can add. Obviously these are all going to be constants. These don't change. This is the little uh, join sign that you want in between the part numbers so I'm using a dash. There's your increment value and um, yeah so the first time you're going to start this uh, it's going to be zero. The first time you actually run this macro, it's going to delete this out like that, and it's going to record the last number that you use here. Now I um, caution you that once you start using your part number schemes, do not edit this field here. This is um, this is how it uh, remembers what was the last number you used. Okay. Mm. Now. I'll just uh, show you what the macro looks like and a couple of uh, little things that you need to be aware of. 
Um, so in under once you're in your VBA IDE under Tools References, just be make sure that you have uh, Microsoft Scripting Runtime checked and uh, the SolidWorks Type Library. This should be checked by default, but if it's not, that should also be checked. And uh, that's really the only prerequisite um, that you need to be aware of. I'll switch back to SOLIDWORKS. Um, I'll also mention that you can, if you're working in a network or a shared environment, you can share this document. So um, I've, uh, I've got a, a network share here, a T drive, and I've placed that document here as well. Now the source can only be either the T, the T drive or the C drive and the way you tell SOLIDWORKS which one to use is by editing uh, under this uh, module here, get data from text file. So if you just double click that, there's a, a public variable path to text file and it's defined right here. So just, uh, so you'll just edit that to the drive that you want and it'll start looking up the next uh, or your network file share. And uh, so you can um, you can have a, a ver multiple people accessing that file. Um, if two people access it at once, which is might happen, but it's highly unlikely, um, you may you'll probably end up getting an error because you, two people can't have right ac right uh, access to the same file. Um, that's really. That's the macro in a gist. Um, I'll just show you the same macro again with a couple of edits applied. So uh, the next number is 5400 and uh, so I'll reset that to zero. And maybe you just want a, a quick method of serializing. Uh, so I'll say start at zero and I'm not going to include any constants and I'll just say increment by one. So this is uh, one way that you can edit your text file here, or the source document, when you first get it or download it. Now back in SOLIDWORKS, start up a new part and start a work with an assembly. Now the first thing you probably want to do is just go ahead and execute that macro. Um, start with the part number. So there's your one. maybe another drawing number. This time it's going to save it as 2. And the serial number is your 3. So you don't have to necessarily apply all of these. You can just do the 1. However, just be aware that it will update uh, the next number in the sequence. If you're using PDM Works Vault, this is a really good way of um, managing your data, making sure nothing is, um, you never ever uh, save a file with the same name or uh, use descriptive file names. Alright guys, that's uh, pretty much it. I, uh, I hope you find this beneficial and uh, thanks very much for watching.